Hope everyone's having a great weekend. Welcome back to Corbin AI, where I'm showing you how to start leveraging artificial intelligence in your personal and your business life. And you clicked on today's video because the title or the thumbnail alluded to the fact that we can actually expedite and make our automations a lot faster by utilizing something in Zapier's current toolkit called Sub Zaps. So just to give a broad overview of what that is, essentially this allows us to take processes that occur throughout our automations and and basically replicate it so we don't have to redo those processes so this will make more sense let's go ahead and jump in here and let's see what a sub zap is and then we're going to build out a flow together where essentially we're going to use a sub zap in the context of essentially when we receive data from chat gbt we're going to automatically format it for whatever the use case may be in that specific zap so knowing this let's go ahead and check out what a sub zap is if you're familiar with this channel, you may have already seen a video where essentially I show and break down the framework to build out any automation. And within that video, I talk about how fundamental the Zapier toolkit is within this process. And one of the icons that should be pointed out here and is important for knowing within this process is the sub zap by Zapiers. So the main use case and the main value we receive from this is essentially just allows us to spend less time when working on automation. So if I scroll down here, you have a couple of different processes such as start a zap, sub zap, call a sub zap, return from a sub zap. If you're familiar with Inception, it's a dream within a dream. This is an automation without automation, which might sound confusing, but truly it isn't. So don't worry about it. Let's go ahead and start building this out together here. And in order to start, we are going to start with essentially building out the sub zap. Now, a very key part of building out the sub zap here is understanding the naming. So the naming is fundamental because this is how we're going to call upon it within our main zap. So we got our main zap and our sub zap, and these will all make sense once we get into this tutorial. So let's go and jump in here and create our first sub zap together. I'm going to say new zap here. And no, I am not French. I am English. And I'm going to go down here and hit trigger here. And we're going to go ahead and do the block of sub zap. There we go. And essentially, we're going to go ahead and start a sub zap. So a sub zap is going to be a reusable automation we can put into other Zapier flows. So one thing that happens during specifically artificial intelligence automation is when you deal with chat GPT outputs, you deal with essentially outputs that are one data point. Now, if you're familiar with this channel, essentially what I mean by that is when ChatGPT gives an output and you want to reuse it in an automation later, it's going to be a paragraph text and you can't grab specific data points. So let's go ahead and create a sub zap where the purpose of this sub zap is to do the formatting process for us. So we don't have to always set up the blocks associated with that. So we're going to go ahead and do formatting chat GPT outputs. From here, we're going to go ahead and provide essentially the data that we want to grab from our main zap here. So in this context, since the purpose of this is going to be formatting chat GBT outputs. We can just put chat GBT output here. So we put chat GBT output and there we go. And as you see, there is other options here. And just for the purposes of this video, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put in like filler. So you kind of see what it looks like on the, the back end or, or on the main zap. So you can understand essentially these can get very complex where you can provide a lot of data for whatever your use case may be. But for now, we're going to go ahead and hit test trigger. There should be no data here due to the fact that essentially you know, we haven't sent it from the main uh, Zapier yet. So before we continue building out this sub zap here, let's go ahead and jump over to building out a main zap that's going to use this sub zap. I know a lot of zaps, right? <laughs> go ahead and create a new zap here. And we're going to go ahead and just call it uh, received email. So the actual use case of today's tutorial is not really to show you like value when it comes to the main zap. It's more to show you value in the sub zap, right? So we're just gonna do something simple here. We're gonna do a Gmail block where essentially we received an inquiry from a lead. We're gonna then basically ask ChatGBT to give us the fundamental outputs. And then we're gonna go ahead and ask the sub zap to format the output. So we're gonna go ahead and do new email uh, in inbox. We're gonna continue here. We're gonna choose our account. We're gonna do our courses account here. This is where we sent our test or fake email in our other tutorial video, where essentially it was, um, you know, a random lead for a random lead for a lawn mowing service. I'm going to hit test trigger here. We should get that email here and we do. So just so you guys know what I'm talking about here, we're talking about this one right here. So we got new customer message, all the data associated with that. Perfect. Let's go ahead and jump back over to here. Okay. And what we can do here is a couple things. So if our specific use case is going to be essentially, you know, grabbing data for emails, you could take the extra step here where essentially we'll do 
you know, the, the data grabbing in this. But for this specific use case, I want to make this as universal as possible. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to basically ask for a specific type of chat GBT output. So let's go ahead and just format this email real quick. So we're going to do a uh, conversation. We're going to continue, continue here. And we're going to go ahead and say based off this lead email, say context. We are a lawn mowing, uh, lawn mowing company who just received a lead from email, not form email, from email. And then as we know here, we provide the relevant information about the email. So we're going to say uh, lead email, semicolon, we're going to do subject, and then we're going to do body. So then we'll provide that relevant information here. Here we go. So from that data block, we got the subject here. From the body, we got the body plane here. And then we're gonna say generate the following information. So in this context, we're gonna just generate relevant information that's important to us. So, you know, we're gonna do uh, square feet and then do semicolon. Let's do uh, lead name, semicolon, and let's do uh, phone number. As you know, the phone number is not formatted correctly, so don't go crazy on me. Uh, phone here, and then, you know, one sentence summary of lead. So if you're familiar with the other video, this is going to be kind of repeating. If you're not familiar with the other video, uh, then this isn't repeating, but essentially, let's go ahead and format this out. So we're gonna do GBT4 here. Uh, memory key of just uh, you know random 32 character string so we can consist have consistent outputs we're gonna say test the step here and here's our output here so as you see here we got our one sentence summary uh, the phone number the lead name and square footage so typically as we know uh, essentially what we're trying to circumnavigate here is let me just go ahead and grab honestly anything so let me just do like a formatter block here and then let's just do numbers and continue here transform format currency doesn't really matter because so I'm just trying to show you the input. So essentially, what we're trying to circumnavigate here is with every single chat GPT block, especially when you format for data like this, it's going to be one block. But the problem is, is that what happens if in the flow, we want to just grab the name? What happens if we just want to grab the square footage? What happens if we want to grab the one sentence summary? We can't do that because it's all stuck up in this one block. So in order to get out of that situation, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and use that sub zap feature. So then... Basically, what we can do now is we're going to say call subzap and continue here. We're going to choose our account or however you formatted it there. And then as you see here, we got formatting chat GPT outputs. So we've already created this subzap. We're going to go ahead and provide the relevant information it's requesting here. So this is going to be the reply. And then the input argument filler, that was just me just giving you an example of maybe you want to provide more data here. So for this, I'm just going to say uh, test. Hit continue here and let's test this step. It should fail because essentially there is no return on it, but we are just trying to send, yeah. So we're just trying to send the data over so we can start playing with it in our sub zap. So jumping over to our sub zap here. Now we can go ahead and hit continue here, continue here. And then we say find new record and this should show up here. Okay, as you see, here it is. Now we can start really manipulating the data here. So let's do a couple things. Let's do formatter and let's just do what I originally was talking about where essentially we separate the data points. So we're gonna say transform here, we're gonna say split, and we're gonna go ahead and provide the input here. So that is going to be uh, chat GPT output. And then we're gonna do a separator. As you know, this is just documentation from Zapier. So we're gonna do new line. And then we do our segment index here. We're gonna say all as separate fields continue. And then we're gonna test this step. Okay, perfect. So now we have identified that when we get chat GPT outputs, it will automatically remove that information. So let's take it one step further here. Let's say, as we know here, um, when you're dealing with social media, sometimes you wanna format it into separate lines, but you also wanna remove certain characters within those lines. So I know one thing that is very apparent within ChatGPT outputs that can be very annoying is quotation marks. So we're gonna use an event of replace. And essentially you would put in the input that is typically correlated with your the, the quotation marks showing up, so most of the times it's either going to be based off analysis off chat GPT. It could be the captions, but I just want to show you for this example, we can go ahead and put a quotation mark here and then it would essentially remove the question quotation marks.
But let's say in this context, we actually just want to remove the one sentence summary from that output because maybe we use a one sentence summary lead uh, concurrent with a lot of our different flows, right? So maybe this is like something that is universal with all of our different automations because essentially we, you know, we just call upon that. So we're going to say find one sentence summary here. We're going to replace an empty space here. We're going to hit continue. We're going to test this step. All right, so perfect. So then we got re remove that automatically. And then, you know, just to play around here, we could even go as far as adding another chat GPT step if we wanted to. So in theory, you know, you could add some type of formulation here. Actually, let's not do a chat GPT step because the purpose of this is formatting. We could do something along the lines of just showing you the possibilities here. So maybe the context isn't you want to format the data and output it. Maybe the context is you want to send it to, you know, send it by email. So is there some type of activity where you always notify yourself, send it through the Slack channel, you know, stuff of this nature, just you can really get your head going here where basically flows that occur throughout uh, your automations that you have to always do stuff like this, you can start using sub apps for. So as I showed before, a great example, this is social media captions. I know in social media captions, I've had to do, I have had to do this a ton of times when it comes to either splitting data and using quotation or getting rid of quotation marks. So now this block can kind of incur in that nature. So what I can do from here though, is once we're done kind of sealing the deal here, and all you got to think about is a sub zap is truly just another zap, but we just call upon it. So we can go ahead and put in sub zap here. And then from here, we're going to have to put return from sub zap. That is very important. If you don't do that, we're not going to be able to get essentially it to be called back upon and use it later in the flow. So the values we want to return here is going to be a couple of things. So let's say in our context, it would just be, uh, you know, name. It would also be, oh, let's go ahead and provide the name. It would be name here. It'd be square feet and provide the square feet here. And then we can go ahead and put uh, ch -ch -ch phone. And then we can go ahead and put the last one here, which was replacing or removing the underlying data here. So sentence summary, or just say AI summary. And go ahead and use the other formatted block here. There we go. Hit continue here and then test this step. And then this will send the data back to our main app here. So let's go ahead and hit publish here. Both have to be published in order for it to work, obviously. And then we can go ahead and come back over here. And now we come back over here to chat GPT outputs, hit continue, and then test this step. Let's see the output. There you go. So it went ahead and went through that entire process that we built out there. It separated it and gave us the name, the square feet, the phone, and the AI summary without that initial context. And essentially from here, we can continue with our flow and grab upon that. So what is great about that is now in later automations, when I need to format the data of a chat GPT output, I could call upon or basically essentially go here and say, call sub zap, continue. And then you would choose the sub zap. That's why naming is so important. And I would choose formatting chat GPT outputs. So now I don't have to necessarily always create the formatter blocks associated with it. Now you can take this past what I just showed you obviously to a bunch of different use cases. So what I suggest you to do in your context is essentially look at your automations, see what is be, what is happening within your automations that happens you know unilaterally a lot like the, the you know maybe there's three blocks that you use a lot compress it into a sub zap there's other reasons why this is beneficial just to name a few let's say within that let's say within that three blocks you use slack as your your main crm right so you're using slack and and you have built out 40 you know you built out 30 automations using slack as your crm for maybe those three steps now, if you switched for whatever reason from Slack to Basecamp, now that switch is going to require you to go to all 40 of those automations and essentially replace Slack with Basecamp. Same process, right? Alternatively, if you would have had in those 40 automations a sub zap that did those three steps and then you switch to a different program like Basecamp, all you would have to do is go to that sub zap and switch out the Slack block with the Basecamp block. So that's really shows you the, the, the leverage on time you get. And overall, it's a really, really effective way to organize. Plus the idea of essentially being able to call upon specific automation flows you already kind of pre-built allows you to expedite work, right? So if I'm really trying to do something fast for an automation, I can call upon this, this, and this sub zap because I know each one will work flawlessly because I've already kind of pre-built it. So make sure to leave a like for the value. If you found value in today's video, if you liked this kind of content, go ahead and check out the playlist at the end of this video as we are diving into all 5,000 apps, if I can speak, in Zapier and showing you how to leverage AI in every single one. 
This specific video was very focused on just saving you time with building out automations. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise, I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Corbin AI, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.